You cut me off already. There we go. <laughs> Gary was threatening to cut me off. So, Welcome to worship today. We're glad that you're with us on this day that God has given us. If you are visiting, please sign the guest book or one of the cards you find uh, in the pews. Just a few announcements to highlight and lift up this morning. The altar flowers are given to the glory of God by Sharon Hale in memory of her dad, Shirley. So we thank her for those. Also, share the warm sign-up is available. The sign-up sheets are at the back. That's the third Sunday of the month. Uh, our women's study is continuing. And remind you of our community Thanksgiving service that will be at the Methodist Church this year. It happens at 5 o'clock. Our choirs will be a part of it. Uh, I will be a part of that service as well, so please mark your calendars for that. Um, this weekend is Veterans Day, uh, so I would ask that any of the veterans that are here today who have served, please rise. Thank you for your service and for the freedoms that we enjoy because of you. Let us rise for our confession. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made and who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. And Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. We sing our gathering hymn. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Let us pray. 
O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Good morning. Our reading today is from Amos, starting with chapter 5. Our introduction tells us that in the days of Amos, people thought that the day of the Lord would be a time of great victory, but Amos announced that it would be a day of darkness, not light. He said, liturgy is no substitute for obedience. The Lord demands justice and righteousness in the community. Starting with chapter 18, alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Please read with me Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who say to me, Aha, and gloat over me, turn back because of their shame. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Our second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The intro says that some of the Thessalonians were worried that dead Christians will be excluded from the resurrection to eternal life when Christ comes again. Paul reassures them with words of hope that all Christians, living or dead, will be raised into everlasting life with Christ. Starting with verse 13, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout. 
Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. Do we have any children willing to come forward this morning? We got one. <laughs> we got a couple others. Okay, cool. How's everybody today? Good? So I have a, a question. Have you ever looked in your mom or your grandma's purse? <laughs> What's in there? A bunch of stuff, <laughs> right? Like chapstick and tissues and a cell phone, maybe a socket set. I don't know. There's all kinds of things in there, all kinds of things. You know why they do that? Because they like to be prepared. In case you need something, like if, you, if your nose is running, grandma or mom might have a tissue inside their purse, right? So they could help you out. So they're, they're always prepared for that. And our Bible story today, Jesus talks about us being prepared, but we don't take a big purse with us, right, to be prepared. He wants us to be prepared with some different things like this. Forgiveness, cheerfulness, kindness, peace, hope, love, happiness, joy, grace, strength, truth, that's a lot of stuff, right? How do you carry all that in a purse? You don't, really. You carry it in your heart. And Jesus helps us to carry that stuff with us. That's what it means to be prepared, when Jesus is talking about being prepared for him to come. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that you call us to be prepared, but also to be prepared to love others as you love us, and to be ready for your coming by what we are and what we do. For it is in your name that we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Have a good day. <clears throat>
According to the Rolling Stone, the Grateful Dead reunion tour. <laughs> and according to the Ladies Home Journal, lose 10 pounds by Judgment Day with our new Armageddon diet. <laughs> Can someone tell me the Scout motto? Be prepared. Be prepared. We all know that, don't we? Be prepared. And in this case, from our readings today, be thoroughly prepared. Jesus told a parable about the kingdom of God, and it concerned some young women who were part of a wedding party. It's a strange parable. Remember, it's a parable, though. Ten bridesmaids, he said, took their lamps. They went to meet the bridegroom, but only five of the ten were wise enough to fill their lamps and to take extra oil. So only five of them were prepared. So when the bridegroom was delayed, the five of the ten had to run out and get more oil because they didn't have enough. And of course, the bridegroom came while they were gone, and the brides who were prepared went in with him to the wedding feast. The five who had gone to buy oil returned. They found the door was shut, and they could not get in. They had missed the feast because they were not prepared. Therefore, keep watch, the master said, because you do not know the day or the hour. And that's simply not just a good idea. It's a direct command from Jesus. Keep watch. Be prepared. Life is full of the unexpected. Sometimes, no matter how carefully we prepared, life kind of sneaks up on us and smacks us on the back of the head. And one Calvin and Hobbes cartoon series, Calvin enters the room and he's dressed with a large space helmet, he has a long cape, he has a flashlight in one hand and a baseball bat in the other. What's up today? asks his mom, looking at his uniform. Well, nothing so far, says Calvin. So far, she questions. Well, you never know, says Calvin. Something could happen today. As Calvin leaves, his mother starts thinking about Calvin's helmet and cape and flashlight and baseball bat, and the final caption shows her thinking, I need a suit like that. <laughs> we all need a suit like that. Life sends us challenges. We call these learning experiences. That doesn't mean they don't hurt. And we learn, but we take our lumps. That's life. Life is full of the unexpected. None of us is totally prepared, but it's important that we do all that we can because we live in a fragile world. The parent of every teenager with a driver's license is aware of the risk involved. Many of us in middle and later years are becoming aware of friends who are dying untimely deaths because of cancer or heart attacks or other things. And we wonder, could I be next? Life is fragile. There's no guarantees of happiness or success for any of us. So we need to be prepared for whatever life sends us. Keep watch, the master said, because you do not know the day or the hour. And we're certainly not prepared for Christ's return. That's what our gospel's about. Christ returned to earth at the end of time. And we have no idea... We have no idea when that will be, although lots of people try to figure it out. It might be thousands of years away. It might be today. When I was in high school and finals week was coming up, I was like, Jesus, please come. Please come soon, because I'm just not ready. But still, Jesus tells us to be prepared, to be prepared to give an account of your life to watch and be ready. But there's another perspective about this preparation. We are to watch with positive anticipation and not dread. Soon our children will be watching and waiting with great expectancy for Santa Claus. They're not waiting with fear. They're not waiting with dread. They're waiting with joyful hearts and it troubles me that so many Christians look to the future with doubt and with dread. In fact, there's so much silliness and so many scary tactics surrounding the portrayals of the second coming that it's difficult to take them seriously. 
Many of the books and the films that purportedly picture Christ's return are clearly intended to scare believers into repentance. We do need to repent. We do need to clean up our lives, but the coming of the Lord, whether at Christmas or at the last day, ought to be something we look forward to, not with fear, but with faith. The point is to be prepared. To be prepared as if you were offered the biggest promotion of your life and you're ready to step into that role. To be prepared that if some tragedy happened, you would be able to ride out the storm because your prayer life was rich and you had a friend in Jesus. To be prepared so that if you dropped dead at this moment, you'd have nothing to apologize for. To be prepared. Harold Ivan Smith, in his book, No Fear of Trying, tells a fascinating story about how battleships from World War II, like the Iowa and the New Jersey and the Wisconsin, were put into mothballs. These ships weighed 58,000 tons. They had 16 to 17 inches of armor. They had superior speed. They helped America win the war. In an era of the modern Navy, the ships were deemed outdated and they were dry docked. The fuel and all the flammable liquids were siphoned. The motors were cleaned thoroughly. The pumps were filled with preservatives. All openings were covered with sealants or metal hatches to prevent moisture. The winches, the machinery, and every moving part was covered with airtight igloos. Dehumidifiers were put into the ships. And some critics fumed that it would have been cheaper just to have sunk them. For 25 years, those ships were mothballed and monitored. There were specialists in the art of preserving things. And then President Reagan called for an immediate increase in the size of the Navy. The ships were recommissioned. Immediately, those who had been dry docked were made seaworthy. But the specialists who had been looking after them knew what they were doing. When the staff boarded the Iowa, they said the ship's crew looked as if they'd merely gone on a weekend leave. The duty schedules posted 25 years earlier had not even yellowed. The ships were ready to do their job. Are you ready for both the challenges and the opportunities that life will send you? Are you ready to stand before God and give an account of your life? Therefore, keep watch, for you do not know the day or the hour, but wait with faith and not with fear. Amen.
Please rise as you're able as we confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath, and our life as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O God, for whom we wait, come quickly to your people. Bring your salvation and center us in hope found only in you. Deepen our faith through meaningful worship and send us out with your justice and truth. Hear us, O God. O God, for whom we watch, we glimpse your power in rushing water and your beauty in the darkening night. Restore creation, provide clean water to all people and animals. Save us from foolish, wasteful living. Hear us, O God. O God, for whom we long, let justice roll down like waters on all nations. Bless citizens with wise leaders. Save your children from war. We pray for the veterans of this community, that they are supported and appreciated and loved. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, in whom we hope, we pray for all who are in need. Provide for those who experience homelessness or hunger. Support the under or unemployed, and comfort any who are suffering or grieving this day, especially Rachel, Diane, Cheryl, Michael, Todd, Rick, David, Debbie, Brian, Martha, Bob, Audrey, Nan, Tim, Jim, Donna, Juliana, Pastor Sarah, Pastor Hank, Pastor Rich, our confirmation class, Carson and Juliet, Trinity Lutheran Church in Riga, licensed lay minister David Corliss, the people of Ukraine and the Middle East, and those impacted by wildfires, earthquakes, and tornadoes. Hear us, O God. O God, for whom we listen, inspire the music ministry of our congregation, fill our worship with songs to proclaim your greatness, help us to sing and dance with joy and tell boldly of your salvation. Hear us, O God. O God, in whom we remain, we remember our loved ones who have died and now live in you. Bring comfort and the assurance of new life to all who grieve. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We offer our spoken prayers, O Lord, and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. We share a sign of the peace. I do 
I just read the thing. We've been helping Brian and Ruth Simon. She, she just, she had a good time. She party hard and was so <laughs> Bring <you> back. Yeah. <laughs> Christian, please rise as you're able. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
And the night in which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, the forgiveness of sin. Do this. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We feast on God's meal of love for us together. You may be seated.
Congregation, please rise. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. Give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Before the blessing, we have one uh, wedding anniversary today for Butch and Pat, our 62nd wedding anniversary. Now may the God of all creation, whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. Blessing of God, sovereign Savior and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. God, go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.